Joining us now at the table, former Treasury official and Morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner to talk about that gas tax holiday and when these prices might come down. Steve, good to see you. You've got your charts with you. Um, I take it you're not as excited as the White House might be about this gas tax holiday. I'm having a hard time finding anybody who's excited as, as excited <laughs> as the White House is about this gas tax holiday. They may not be as yeah. excited about that. As yeah, deep down, out. if you gave them truth serum, I'm yeah. not sure how excited they would be. So what's the first chart here? We're looking well, the first at the chart, yeah. benefits or lack thereof. Yeah, so I heard Brian Sullivan earlier talking a bit about this. So let me show you some numbers and put some flesh on the bones. The average American adult uses 1.8 gallons of gasoline per day. Multiply that by 90 days. This is a three-month program. So that's 162 gallons of gas used by the average American. You multiply that by the 18.4 cents of federal gas tax, get to $29.80. Brian talked about 40, 50 percent getting passed through. I'm being more generous based on some other studies. I think 80 percent gets passed through. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is the average adult American will save $23.85 mm. over a three-month gas holiday. Three months. Three months. So 18 cents that's, a gallon. That's what you end up in your pocket with, $23.85. So then, Steve, that raises the question, who does benefit from this exactly? oil companies from the gas tax yeah. uh, well it's just uh, if you if you look at the next chart you'll see that basically when you get get into what constitutes uh, the price of a gallon of gas at the pump you'll see that the vast majority of the cost is the crude oil and the rest of this is important but but not nearly as important as the crude oil now the president talked yesterday about refining capacity and the problem of the refiners not refining enough gas and he sent them letters and he's having a meeting or Janet Granholm is having a meeting Jennifer Granholm, rather, is having a meeting. But you can, and you can see, in fact, if you look at that little red circle in the upper right corner of the chart on the left, that profit margins for the refiners have gone up. Well, why have profit margins for the refiners gone up? Because if you look at the chart on the right, our refining capacity has gone down. Five refineries have shut in America since the pandemic hit for a variety of different reasons. And the rest of the ones that are left are running at full capacity. And so in that kind of a scenario, yeah, the refiners are going to make a bit more money. But as you can see, relative to every other piece of the puzzle here, it's not a lot. Now, the president also talked yesterday about uh, invoking the Defense Production Act. But what are you going to tell them to do? They're producing at 100 uh, 100 percent virtually. Well, that's the that's the other point, right, that he's the president is saying. I need your help on this oil companies. I need your help. You got to refine. You got to pump more. They can't. They're going as fast as they can. Is it fair to say? It is exactly exactly fair to say. As much oil as can be pumped in America certainly is coming out of the ground. As much as can be refined is being refined, and this is this is simply a, a supply problem. So a let's problem. let's talk about these big prices and consumption. What a high gas price does to people and what impact that has more broadly on inflation. So that's the other, the yin and the yang of this, that if you have lower gas prices, people drive more, and that drives, uh, creates inflation, drives prices back up. And you can actually see a real-world example here. The dotted line at the top is 2019 gas usage, a fairly typical year before the pandemic. I didn't include 2020 because obviously the pandemic was hitting. But then if you look at 2022, which is the darker blue line, you can, uh, 2021, sorry, which is the turquoise line, you can see that it reco was recovering, 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 almost, as, almost got to the dotted black line. But the line below it, the darker blue line, that's this year. We're actually using less gasoline this year than we did last year, even though we're still recovering from a pandemic, because prices have an effect and they discourage consumption. And, and that's the yin and the yang of this thing. So, Claire, obviously the White House wants to be seen as doing everything it can about gas prices and inflation, so this may be more symbolic than anything else. What do you make of the concept of the gas tax holiday and the tepid support, let's call it that, even from Democrats? Well, I worry that the White House isn't focused as they should be on projecting strength. And whether it is a good idea or a bad idea, what is really bad is when a president announces a program and his own party is not fully behind him. So I say there's a political misstep here because it makes the president look weak that and he's got he's already got a strength you know is he exuding enough strength i mean americans want a strong president and so this is bad for him it's a little bit like how they try to clean up on aisle five when he has a gaffe and say well they, he didn't really mean that they should not do that they should let him say what he's going to say i have a question for you though steve why can't those five refineries gear back up again why can't we 
get, why can't Jennifer Granholm today say, or the president say, no refineries can be shut down right now in America because it would help more than the gas tax holiday. Sure. The problem is that of the five, uh, one had a fire, one had some kind of explosion. Uh, you cannot simply, these are not the simply things you can turn on like a car. It takes months. It costs tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. And by the way, you know, this is again a little bit of the schizophrenia. We've been discouraging oil companies from maintaining refineries or opening new ones because we're, we're theoretically in a transition away from gasoline. But we again made a misjudgment as to how long of a transition it was going to be and what we needed to do to make the transition work. To Claire's point on political weakness or the appearance thereof, the president also defied by his own party on issues like voting rights, build back better. This sort of adds to that. White House aides are concerned. So, Steve, you just walked through this about how what little impact this will have if indeed it even comes to be. So what long term, what does change this? What eventually will lead to gas prices going back down? Well, before I do that, uh, a fun fact for today when we talk about Democratic leaders being opposed to this. In 2008, Barack Obama called it a gimmick right when on. it was proposed yeah. during uh, his campaign by his, by his opponent. Look, what's, unfortunately, we're just in a tough place. We, you know, we, we uh, had this explosion in demand due to the pandemic. People are out there, they're buying things. It's created inflation. And the only way to reduce inflation is to reduce demand, usage, whatever you want to call it. And so Jay Powell testified yesterday, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, that an, a recession is not uh, impossible. I think most of us think a recession is somewhere between likely and inevitable. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunately what it's going to take to bring down inflation, bring down all these kinds of price increases, is simply in the short run less demand. The longer run, you can create some more supply. But it's, again, you can't just simply turn these things back on. You can't simply drill a well and have it come online in 30 days. As Jonathan says, we'll see if this gas tax holiday even comes to pass. That's still an open question. Steve Ratner with his world-famous charge. Steve, great to see you as always. Nice Thanks.